thank you very much <laughs> for your amazing talk. And uh, now we are waiting for your questions to come and uh, I will collect the questions. And, um, and then, as I mentioned at the very beginning, when I will call you in, please uh, uh, unmute yourself so that you can ask your question directly to the artist. Doris, so nice to see you. Sorry for being over. A long time no see. Hi. Wait. Here Hi. you are. Can, can, How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Great. Oh, yeah, wonderful to see you <laughs> and so good to listen to this talk. So I'm really happy. Um, so I wanted to ask you about um, how long does it take you to build one of these? I mean, I guess they have different sizes. So I missed the very beginning of the talk. So I don't know if you mentioned that, but so I have no idea. It's so incredible, these works that you do. So how long does it take you for one of these huge ones? Oh, well, the huge, like the, the 1000 shacks piece was like, I think that was seven or eight months and I had a few people helping me, but normally I, I can't really have people helping me unless maybe it's a life-size thing or, um, or it's something um, like where there's a lot of repetitive stuff because when it's a more unique piece, I have to make um, decisions constantly and it's just, there's no way I could use someone, but I work on several pieces at once. So if they're smaller pieces, I might be working on three or four and finishing up, you know, maybe one in a few mm. weeks and another in a month, but I could finish up like five or six in a couple of months. <laughs> it depends, but I also will work like, depending on the deadline, I work nonstop sometimes. And then and may I just I ask, how long do you keep them? Because I mean, it's incredible that you have such a big, you know, home and studio. I get, you're in Berlin, right? And but so I mean, I'm they're huge. So I mean, they have. You have to store them oh. somewhere, or what? What do you do with yeah. them? Yeah, that's the that's the special issue because <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to throw out my work, especially you know, I spend a lot of time and I like the works. I sell, you know, some of the works are in collections, and. Um, I have storage in California where I have work. I have some work here and um, work stored at galleries in Europe also. So I just kind of, but what's great about that. So um, like the show I'm gonna do in Munich, I have some of the city pieces and I really wanted to show them together. So I'll finally have a chance in the space that I can have these works shown together in the way that, you know, initially when I was building them, I built them one by one, but I feel like it kind of belongs that way. Great, thank you so much. So I'll be in yeah. Berlin again in the spring. So maybe I get a chance to see your work. That would be well, really yeah. wonderful. Yeah, but... sure. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks, Doris. And now Jamie, Jamie is here with me. Not, I mean, is it so? <laughs> Uh, the same city. <laughs> yeah, at least we're in the same city. Hi, hi, Jamie. Good evening. Please. Um, hey there. Uh, Tracy, I, I remember that you started your lecture by talking about um, your training as a photographer. And then mm -hmm. the last slide that you showed is a collaboration with a wonderful photographer, Roger Ballin. Uh, but you're not collaborating as two photographers. And I was just uh, curious if photography still plays a role in your practice today or if it's just another tool um yeah it's it's really I mean it changed how how it is part of my practice because initially it was the sole part of my practice and then when I was you know got into building the sculptures I used I shot many years with a four by five to shoot the sculptures. And, and then I got tired of doing that. So I stopped. And, um, and then I was using photography, um, documenting when I travel and then those photographs become part of my work. So um, like, well, I'll show you. Even, well, this here, this is, um, this is in Oakland this piece and there's video in the window, but that's made up of several photographs that I took. So 
the photographs stayed in my work definitely. Um, but now like doing the project in Tokyo, um, doing the video and then the photographs, I'll show the photographs on their own and then there will also be the video. Um, so it's kind of changed because I never really did interviews and that's a new aspect of my work. And I really enjoyed that so much. And then to, um, to have the photographs of those, I think, I think it's a new way in a way that I'm using them. But it, but it is interesting because with Roger, um, you know, I'm not going to have, well, not really going to have photos hanging while he will, but he's, he's a big influence, like, um, you know, someone I've admired for many years. So I'm really happy to be doing the show with him. Oh, and um, Sasha Alexander Timchenko is curating it. Who's here right now. Hi. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Jimmy. And now, Nika. Hi. So before I ask my question, there's like a comment. Like I have visited several places that you have captured with your art, like Chongqing, uh, mm -hmm. Hong Kong, and uh, Zhu Jiazui. And I think like the way you capture the emotion that these buildings and space struck a visitor like me is pretty extraordinary. Like the the, the oh. precision, I think, is pretty cool. And like and also the combinations of audio and the boldness of the color and the scale. So that's just my passing comment. It's like pretty extraordinary for me to revisit some of the emotions when I'm like looking at your artworks. And like, here comes the question. Okay. <laughs> um, it's like many features of your artwork also seem a little bit intentional. Like, for example, with your use of the scale and the audio and the color, and I wonder, do you generally know what you want the audience to focus on before your art creating process? And do the themes that you want to highlight change as you make the art? And are there any pieces that you prefer more ambiguity or less clarity and appreciate audience interpretation more? Yeah, I, I um, well, at first it's nice that it makes you think of, I'm glad it makes you think of the areas because that's what I hope happens, you know? I mean, especially um, since sometimes I'm not in a place so long, I just go through. So I go and experience a place. Now I'm starting to do more research and find out more, but sometimes I just go visit and then that's my experience and then I build it. And, um, and when I start building, sometimes I have a sketch, but, um, other times I'll just start and um, and it comes organically. So it will develop organically. And a lot of, sometimes I do have an idea in mind of what I wanna get across, but a lot of times I've just let it come out. Like I feel like I absorb it and then I put it out without even mm, always consciously thinking about it. And what was the last was? Oh, oh, if I want to really like, wait, I forget what it was. You what were, was the you last were... one? Nika? Like, um, are there any artwork of yours where you embrace the freedom, like where, when you embrace, like when audiences like have the freedom to interpret your pieces however they want, where for example, the focus, that you want to highlight is a little bit different from the audience? Um, I guess I don't often, like once in a while, I don't know. I, I'm not often thinking of like, I want you to think this, you know? So um, I think it happens a lot that I kind of do what I want and then there's layers in the work and people will take what they're gonna take from it. So like one thing that was really interesting, I mean, this is an example of something I just shot. I shot it when I was in, um, in Yangshua and, um, oh, I have to plug, it's gonna get loud again, sorry. I have to plug it in so you can see the lights, but um, it was in the marketplace, they have these, um, 
you know, the, people like to eat dogs, especially in the South. And then there were these photos. So that's in the marketplace and that's the dogs, you know? And when I photographed it initially, I was like, I mean, it's kind of shocking because I, I grew up with dogs as pets and it's difficult for me to see it. But also it was, you know, I'm kind of attracted to, to capture what is difficult sometimes. And, and then I feel like the images are kind of really lush and beautiful, but then kind of horrifying for me, for maybe West, more Western people that don't eat dogs. But then, you know, the more I, after hanging these again and talking a lot about them, um, you know, other animals have feelings also. <laughs> and so why is it, you know, that we're so horrified that it's dogs, but, you know, we're easily, if you look at like factory farms, you could see how horrifying that is. And it, is it much different than this? And then um, one of the artists I was showing with at the time, she said, um, she thought it was how the Chinese government treats the people, which was a whole other layer of meaning that I hadn't thought of before she said that. And then now after COVID and the talk of the wet markets, it takes on a whole different meaning. So this, I guess this is a, an example where, you know, you can think about, you know, initially I took it because it's different and visually interesting, but also kind of fascinating, but a bit horrifying. And then all these different layers of meaning come onto it, depending who's looking at it and then what's happening in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. And now, Magali from Shanghai. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much, um, both of you, for having this wonderful talk. Um, considering, Tracy, the, the, the dimensions of your sculptures, how do you source your material? Is sustainability an issue for you in acquiring your materials? Mm. Well, I, I, when I started building, I was attracted to older materials, like old wood, stuff like that. But then sometimes you would have a problem with like mold or <clears throat> it not being something that would last. So early on, I decided, you know, I have to get new wood. You know, it could be leftover scraps or something if I can get a hold of those. But often I just have to go to the, you know, hardware store and buy um, new wood. But like building the um, 1000 shacks in tenement, a lot of the window covers and parts of it were um, leftover plastic from groceries or things like that. So I, I try to source um, some recyclable materials, but, um, but in the end, I often have to use new materials because, um, because of the longevity of it. But I do feel that <clears throat> since I pretty much keep, you know, all of the work I make and my installations, it's not such a um, big impact of, in the big scheme of things because I'm not building a big installation and then, you know, throwing it away. But yeah. Which happens pretty often. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it, yeah it, it does happen and it's a bit painful. This is, but it is what it is. Yeah. And I think, well, a lot of times artists can't of, you know, they can't afford to store everything either. So, um, I mean, I've just been lucky that I've been able to keep everything so far. Thank you, Magali. And now, Natalina, next. Here you are. Hello. Hello. Hi, from Beijing. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Well, kind of Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Nataline was at um, Or Smiley Gallery when I was there in 2008. Yeah, exactly. So reacting 
Now to Magali, I wanted to remind <coughs> you, Trace, and, and, and tell everybody, I remember when you were at the gallery and it was about Chinese New Year and there were <laughs> firecrackers everywhere in Cao Tandi village. And I remember we were going and picking up you remember the scrap, so so yeah, we they're in it actually. Oh, you do have it there. Yeah, yeah. it's in. I mean, there's some scraps right there, oh. the red stuff. But then it, I still, I still also have it um, in a box because back in the back on that wall where all those boxes are ah. in the back is um, Wong's house. So I have, I still have the remnants wow yeah. and i remember that we were going and picking up <clears throat> actually trash around the village and people were kind of <laughs> puzzled about what is this foreign lady doing here you know just yeah, why is she up picking trash. up the trash right <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny so it was mm -hmm. a very nice experience and thank you for the uh, sharing uh, for sharing your experience because it makes really a difference for me from that time on of being mm -hmm. following your work I saw it in Venice and in other places but mainly pictures are otherwise so it's good to have an overview and it's interesting to see how this anthropological and sociological interest of yours now is getting into you getting to not only to create stories around what you see but also to interact with the actual people living there, which I think yeah. comes to a very interesting point in this moment. Um, so when you were mentioning the exhibition with Roger, I thought it's the right moment for the two of you to meet artistically, actually. Yeah. If we think about how Roger then takes the pictures or took the pictures in the past of the subjects he, he knows personally, mm -hmm. And then he created, he creates uh, sometimes or recreates kind of the ghosts of he, or he creates a sort of exorcism through the <clears throat> rebuilding of the situations like he did in Arle, for example, with this house. He mm -hmm. re-inhabited by the ghosts of the people who were living there formerly. So I, I think it's interesting how the two of you now come together at the, with different journeys in your artistic life so would you like yeah. to tell us more about what brings you now to want to get in touch with the people who are actually the protagonists of those stories oh um well I think you know a few actually it's funny it maybe it started back at um at the gallery the show I did with you where um oh. You know, in Wong's house, I remember, um, God, I, I'm blanking on the assistant's name, that young guy who was so nice who got married. Hi, Jun. Yeah, hi, Jun. Hi, Jun. June. Yeah, um, when the photographer was taking a picture mm -hmm. of Wong's house, he had hi, Jun sit in. I remember. In, in the house. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, you know, it's like he belongs there and all of a sudden it becomes something different and the space is activated. And because right. he was just in there for the photo, he's like, um, he's almost like a, a live sculpture. And this, I think, started the idea which led to the performances to activate mm. the spaces. And then when I wanted to shoot the love hotels, um, I mean, I could just shoot the rooms by themselves, but after having the experience with the performances, it adds so much more to have a person there and some kind of interaction happening. The themed love hotel rooms are, are like, um, they're like the rooms I built, but they're built for me already. So um, I was going to bring, um, I wanted to just get people like, local people that I didn't know to to do the interviews with me but um talking with like even the the people at the residency um were really shy you know I asked them if they wanted and they're like no 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 and so um <laughs> so I thought oh yeah. this is not gonna work and then I had to like you know had I had friends that were there at their 
grew up in Tokyo that did it with me and they introduced me to people and some of the artists did, but, um, but I just, I don't know. I thought it's nice to put a different layer and to get more intimate and find out more um, just to add a, a different part to my work. And, and also um, recently um, I met up with the organizer that helped save, um, save these two apartment buildings here in Berlin. And initially mm -hmm. he, he had seen one of my sculptures and sent me an uh, email and was kind of like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> you know, am I, am I just trying to sensationalize the area because, mm -hmm. you know, they had to deal with so much and I could understand what he was talking about. So, so to meet with him and to get the background information also to show him that I'm not like trying to take advantage. Um, it, it just added more to my experience and, um, and I think it's important to start doing more of that in the future. Interesting, thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Natalie. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Now, we go back to Jamie. Sorry, before we go back to Jamie, just one thing. So I think, but this is a comment. So the, what you just mentioned now with also Natalina is that now the connection is not, it's more and more the connection with the place and the connection with people, which is also what we mentioned about Scampia and what you just said regarding Tokyo. So in the end, if you, when you, if you do want to deep dive in what is going on, uh, yeah. you, you have to really get in touch with those who live there and they basically yeah. accompany you and they guide you and what I think it's very interesting is that very often I'm pretty sure that you will point to things that they wouldn't even notice because when you are so immersed in an environment very often then you start missing some yeah you know so uh, interesting yeah it's very multi-layered uh, exercise I'm really moving from I mean I think in a part I'm like I'm born an introvert, so so it's more natural for me to stay from the outside and just be a viewer, like a passive viewer, or, you know, I can experience a place, but but to step in and become more involved and interview people, it's, you know, it's, it's also something where I have to put myself out there and it's just a different experience. So it's uncomfortable sometimes, but it's, I think, more interesting and adds more to the work, definitely. Back to Jamie. Here you are. Hi. Uh, Hi thank again. you for, for getting a second chance to ask a question. Uh, sorry to take up so much time, but I was very curious about you know the buildings and the little windows and all the the vignettes that are happening behind them. And um, from the couple of comments that that uh, preceded me, I, I'm getting the sense that they're fictional. Um, fictional stories that, that you're making rather than documentary. But I, I was just hoping that you could say, share more about your process and uh, combining the architecture of the building with the individual stories. And, you know, is there any logic behind it or who gets the top floor, who gets the corner apartment? Yeah. Do they know each other in your own mind? Do they intersect on some level? So I, I just want to hear more about your process in populating the buildings with individual stories? Well, I think that that brings up something interesting because um, to also talking about like researching, you know, starting to do more research around an area, I was just thinking there's like some kind of like, I think I have to like do research, but maybe not to a certain degree because I'll never finish any work because it could go keep going so deep you know and then the work takes so long to make um so what what usually has happened in the past is that I you know experience a place or like here I go down the street and take all the pictures of the building and I've been in the neighborhood so much but um most of the time is really spent building the structure and um and then at the end, I'm adding, maybe I have a few ideas of videos and I collect mostly um, scenes from films and I get them off of YouTube now, but, um, 
that I think, you know, who would live in this building, what different kinds of people. And I try to take a big wide range of those people, you know, so to cover all the different cultures and different class levels and, um, you know, men, women, gay, straight, try to mix, mix it to what the area kind of in, informs me from being there. But, you know, honestly, like I'm, these take so long. I'm always like, oh my God, I got to finish the piece. And then, and then I'm at the end, like frantically gathering the photos and the video. And um, it's, it's almost like this fast intuitive process. Um, but, but I think I'm really good at it. Like, I think it just works naturally. Um, so, but I don't have like even have the time to make up the all the stories of who like who knows who in the building and uh, who lives where yeah <laughs> thanks thanks again Jamie do you I I mean I guess it's also a way for you to engage us right because in the end, you you let us, the viewers, to build up our own stories about what's going on. Yeah. Like with women, women in the run, same thing. So in the end, is what's going on here? We are the voyeurs going to yeah. look and <laughs> building up our own our own stories based on our own experiences. It's a I think it's a it's a great way to really uh, engage the audience and. And, and interact with the audience. So you, you also feel part of, you feel that you are um, complete, not completing, but taking part of, mm. taking part oh, in, the, in, the, yeah. in the artwork. Yeah, yeah, I like to, um, I like to, yeah, have it open-ended somewhat so people can bring their own experiences to, um, to the work and, and also to have multiple layers. So maybe like, um, you know, some people might just be attracted because it's small and it has lights <laughs> and then <laughs> maybe they go up and look at it and then see something else that's interesting. I also think when I do want to get a certain point across occasionally, um, it's a, it's an interesting way to get people to look who might not look if, if I was making a political statement that's just straight out because this is more subtle. And so I might be able to get people's attention who would just, you know, walk past it otherwise. Back to Doris. Yeah, if, if there's still time, I don't know. Absolutely, time back to London. So. I didn't mention that <laughs> yes. because you're in London, right? Yes, I'm in London. Um, so Tracy, I just wanted to ask you, I didn't get the beginning and I actually really didn't do much research on you. So I was really, really curious to, to learn so much. So I guess you're American, right? So I don't know where you really, where you come from originally. Um, but so did you, I mean, you deal with urban environments. So, and did you ever think of doing pieces from the US? Because I mean, there's lots of things to think about if you think about the US so and you've been to Asia you've been to Berlin yeah. now so I don't know oh yeah I've done a lot of uh US work actually okay. um like several 7-elevens <laughs> but a lot of US stuff um this piece right here that I have in the studio is um it's like it's a political piece one of the really you know outwardly political pieces that I made so during um Trump's re-election run. Um, Rudy Giuliani, his, um, let me turn the sound out. His, um, his lawyer wanted to have a press conference at the Four Seasons Hotel in Philadelphia and someone um, reserved the Four Seasons total landscaping um, parking lot instead <laughs> on the outskirts of Philadelphia and it's right next to a porn shop. So it was really funny. Um, because while well, I'm, I'm Democrat, he just like horrified me for four years. So it was nice to have some kind of like a, um, some humor to the situation. So I built the piece immediately, but this is, Trump campaign. this is it right here. See. There's a, 
<laughs> the first part of a situation that is extremely, extremely troubling. First of all, for the state of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and then for a num number of other states. <laughs> and then nice I. To meet you, my dear. Nice to meet you. Oh. You are one of my greatest heroes. Oh, that's so nice. Thank yes. you. Thank you. I will try my best. My greatest hero. And this is the. Um, well, you relax. I'll relax. You that's the finish. porn shop. Um, All the networks. Wow. Anyways, this is a. Uh, I'll turn it off now. It's so loud. Yeah, this is an example of something recent that I did in the U.S. You know, based around the U.S. Um, but it just it just happens that I have a lot of work here um, from China right now. No, thank you very much. So that's very interesting, yeah. and I'll look much more into those pieces. And I, I totally remember um, this this landscaping business thing where they had this. Yeah, that was really funny. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Now, okay, back to us. At the moment, we yeah we have no other question. But Alexander was asking me about these two paintings, but I can write it in the day after, <laughs> not, to, <laughs> not to distract us from from the talk. They have their own story. I will tell you. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. sorry? sorry. Uh, for I know everything about Tracy's work, I just had this question about on Carrara. Uh, Tracy, it was a great talk. I have to leave. I'm really oh, sorry. Uh, we see us in Berlin and uh, as a road. Oh, day. yeah, thank you. Really, really looking forward to the show and, and uh, it's getting really interesting and uh, fantastic. So we really look forward to it. So great talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Sasha. Yeah. I'll see you yeah. Friday. Thanks for joining. Thank oh, you. Bye. 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 <laughs> so now I think, yeah, if no other question is coming, I think we can say class dismissed as great usual. Thank you, Thank you so much. much, everyone. Thanks again, Tracy. Thanks to all of you for, you. for joining. Uh, have a great afternoon to, to you, to those who are connecting from, from Europe. I don't think we have someone from the States today. And uh, good night to us here in Asia on this side of the world. So thank you. Thank you very and much. Thank you so much Bye. for coming.